everybody. Uh, my name's my name's Chris Martin. I'm the uh, senior field application engineer for BenQ America. Uh, it's a very uh, fancy way of saying uh, I'm the uh, I'm the head nerd who explains how all our products work. So what we're going to be demonstrating here today is our RP series, which I have behind me, but uh, the, the same is applicable for uh, all of our uh, interactive flat panels. And we design them around three main tenets, safety, security, and simplicity. And that's both from the uh, teaching standpoint. Teachers uh, have enough on their plate uh, to learn. They don't need something they need a whole bunch of training on. They just need something that works. We feel like we have that here with our RP product. And also from an IT administrative standpoint, so uh, we will make sure that we're, we're making these devices easy to manage, easy to turn on, easy to deploy apps to. Uh, so all of, our, all of our administrative tools are hosted via Amazon Web Services, via AWS. Uh, we do have Active Directory integration as well. So we'll show you how that all kind of ties in and kind of rolls into this uh, virtual classroom environment that we're, that we're starting. So uh, what you're seeing right now is uh, the RP 75-inch uh, flat panel behind me. And you should see a, a view of my desktop. So is everybody seeing uh, the desktop okay and seeing my small view of the, of the camera here okay? Yes. Um, I can't. Uh, anybody else can't? Is there anybody that can't? So we give, a thumb, give Bill a yeah, thumbs up. Right yeah. okay. 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 So what, are, what I'm going to show you here is how we uh, – so we're, we're joined here with this GoToMeeting, and that's, that's generally – um, what we use internally here at BenQ, but whether you're using Zoom, I think we, we mentioned WebEx for, uh, for tomorrow's demos, so we'll make sure we'll highlight that, uh, Google Meets, Hangouts, whatever it is that you're, you're, you're video conferencing a choice, we can use here at the flat panel. So what I'm going to do is we have a wireless screen sharing product called InstaShare, and everything I'm showing you here at the panel when it comes to the software, uh, all the features that we have included, Everything is included in the price of the uh, of the board. So we don't sell software, we don't sell upgrades, we don't sell licensing or features. Everything you see here is included in the cost of the board. So nothing to, to maintain. And where we kind of set ourselves apart is uh, we consider ourselves an open source cloud based platform. So you know the the board works around you, not the other way around. So we don't shoehorn you into a specific software package. So if people are using, they want to, if if they're at a point where they're trying to decide between WebEx or uh, Google Meets, then they can make that decision, and they can. And if they choose to go with another platform, they choose to switch to Go to Meeting at a different time. They're not going to have to make a reinvestment in their uh, in their hardware or any software licenses from the from the display standpoint, anyway. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I have normally if we had more than one board here, I'm here I'm here in the golf course uh, at, at my condo here in Dallas, Texas. So I only have one board here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect to it. Uh, I, I had this set up with a, with a password recently, so let me uh, um, well, first show you how we can log into the board to, to, to get this password. Normally, I'd have this unpassword protected. I was shooting a, 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 de a demo earlier, so uh, we have these NFC cards where we can uh, actually scan this here on the front of the board. And let me bring my camera down here just a bit, so I'll just scan this here at the front. And we'll see we're logged in automatically to the board. So all of our uh, our favorite settings, our, our background follows us, uh, all of our favorite widgets here. And so um, let me uh, let me get you a view of the board. I'm going to open up InstaShare. Chris? Sure. Could you repeat the model number that you're re demonstrating, please? Sure. This is the RP7501K. So we, we, we generally refer to this as the, as the RP750, uh, the RP01K series. So... We have the RP01K series here. We have a uh, RM uh, series of the. Uh, we'll go and Bill has a sheet, and we'll go over the differences of those two models. And we have a we have a newer model RM02K, which we're going to get a launch here, uh, I believe, in the next two to three months. So, uh, but I'll get specific dates for you on those. So we're going to go to the connection guide here for the setup. And just so you know, this works with our RM panel as well. So, sure, All absolutely. Models. Um, so we have a few options here, and we'll, we'll give you a little bit closer view here once we connect via InstaShare. So I'm going to use this connect code that I have turned on. So I'll type that in here at the computer, 75. And we can refresh this in between classes as well. So, Or if this is something that we're, if we're, if it's an environment where we have a teacher, they're going to be the only person in the classroom, we can turn this feature off and have them connect directly to the board. So we have two options here. Uh, where we can start casting is which is where we take 
what's on my display, and I'll actually give you a, a quick preview of that now. Uh, Start casting is where I take my laptop and actually cast this here to the uh, display. So we can have up to four devices here, uh, or if I can choose the single mode here. And not only are we casting uh, wireless, we're casting the display wirelessly, we're also passing touch wirelessly as well. So I can actually double click on these, uh, uh, on these files here and be able to, to open up PowerPoint from my, from my laptop. So what we'll, we'll actually be showing you uh, right now is uh, the opposite of that, which is uh, screen mirroring. And this is how we'll, we'll be able to share our screen through any of these video conferencing apps for this distance learning application. So we'll click screen mirror, and what that's gonna do is take what's on the flat panel and show that on my laptop, which then I'm, I'm then able to pass out to the audience, which in this case is you. But if this were a virtual classroom, this is how we'd be able to pass that on. So I'm just going to click this here to enlarge this, make sure. So is everybody seeing a, a close-up view of the settings from the uh, flat panel in addition to seeing it behind me on the camera? That's good. Okay. Yep. So I'll hit this back here, and we'll go back over this login process because I want you to take a look at it here up close. Uh, and before we do that, we'll talk about the hardware. And so with the hardware, uh, we talked about safety, security, simplicity. And for a long time, even before this, this whole COVID-19 lockdown outbreak, uh, uh, you know, however you'd like to refer, refer to it as, uh, safety has long been a, a, the top tenant of, of BenQ. And so we've improved that with our certified flicker-free low blue light uh, displays. We're one of the only manufacturers, the only manufacturer that I'm aware of anyway, uh, that has the antibacterial, antimicrobial uh, coding here in the screen. We do that with by bonding an ionic silver into the display. And it's actually certified by an in, independent laboratory in uh, Germany. So we're hearing there's some other companies that are trying to say that their boards are antibacterial, antimicrobial. Uh, I will say if anybody is presenting their boards in that way, ask them for a certificate. So uh, some people are saying, oh, we include a microfiber cloth and a bottle of alcohol, uh, of spray alcohol, and the, the board is now antibacterial. It doesn't exactly work that way. So if someone says their board's antibacterial, ask them for a certificate. So here we're kind of in our guest mode. We can uh, get the easy right, which is our whiteboarding application. We'll be digging into this here in just a second. Uh, and then from the connection here, we can swap HDMI 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we can label these as well. We've got a VGA and display port. And then InstaShare is our wireless screen sharing product, which we're, sh we're showing you right now. Uh, but other than that, everything else requires a login. And so we can type in our username and password here. I can use my body to shield my credentials if I'm not sharing the screen here. So if I'm live in the classroom, I can use my body to hide that. That's kind of an old-fashioned way of logging in, though. So uh, we want to make things easier for our teachers. So, again, that kind of goes to our uh, simplicity tenant. So uh, we'll click login here, and we can actually scan a QR code to log in. So a teacher can type in a username and password on their phone once be able to save that. Now, every time they come to the classroom, they can scan that QR code. Or again, we were talking about these NFC cards, and I'll just scan this at the front of the display. And it takes just a second. And this is, this is all, all this login process is handled via Amazon Web Services, via AWS. So it's all in the cloud. So again, my, my background is here, all my shortcuts, how bright the display is. So if you have multiple teachers who are sharing the same room, they're not fighting over settings. All they do is scan their card. The volume level is there. But most importantly is this here, especially in this distance learning kind of environment, we're automatically signed into Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive. And so in my case, I'm for this demo account, I'm only attached to my Google Drive. But we'll open up my drive, and you can see that I'm able to uh, uh, browse through my images here. We'll hit Open File. And so we're able to, to, to very quickly open this file. This is a, a, just a small thumbnail image I was using for a different uh, demo. But, but very easy access to, again, Google, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, without having to type in your credentials. And we use OAuth to actually make this, this connection. So in this fall, these settings follow teachers from board to board, class to class. So every board in the district that's attached to their uh, uh, admin account, and we'll, we'll talk about how our, our back end is set up via uh, AWS. That's how these boards are connected. And so all you got to do is scan the QR code, 
scan the NFC card or type in your username and password and all of your settings will follow you. So uh, with that in mind, we'll go over very quickly the, uh, the easy right, the whiteboarding application. And actually what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll show you that the, the, we're going to jump. Norm normally we get, kind of go through all of these um, options down here and we'll dig through out here in just a second, but we're going to jump right to the, uh, the heart of what people are kind of looking for. And so uh, we think that most, most manufacturers will allow you to uh, use the use the board kind of this way, where there's some kind of simple screen sharing out and then being able to connect to a video conferencing unit. So where BenQ kind of differs is that we also offer this whiteboarding space in the cloud. So uh, right here, we're gonna hit this little plus sign and I'm gonna hit invite. And what we're gonna do is uh, start a web session. So you'll see behind me, uh, or Actually, if you if you take a look at the screen share, if you if you get your phone out, you can actually open up your phone camera and point this to the QR code. It should pull up a link that you can click on. You can actually join my whiteboarding session here and take a look and see uh, how this how this whiteboarding space works. So I'll give everybody just a minute to get that done. And so let's see here. Let me. Swap my camera here. So, every, so, every, I'll, uh, so we should have, you know, everybody who wants to connect here should be able to click. All you have to do is type in your name, or you can just type in a first initial. Just make sure you're not leaving that name filled blank. And you're connected to my session, and so you should be able to see. I'm not, I'm not much of an artist here, but we'll just jump in. You can use your finger. You can use. We have the the, the two stylus, and we'll go over the different CZs in a second. Very easy to change colors. I mean, this is uh, all kind of the same thing. So has everybody seen uh, what I'm drawing here on their uh, uh, mobile device for everybody that's, that's, that's trying to connect that way? And so right now, you, you're probably not able to, your, your controls are grayed out at the bottom of the screen here. So I want to make sure, so the, the, the board starts out in this, what we call broadcast mode. And so teachers very easily, if we want to be able to have people be able to connect and actually collaborate with this white space, I can turn on the co-creation mode. And so now as the audience, as, as a student, you're actually able to interact with the board and actually draw on here. Someone's added a mustache, that's awesome. Uh, so one of the, the most powerful pieces of this, if you go to your toolbox here, or actually I think from the mobile view, you'll have your actual notepad here. You can create notes in different colors. So I'll say yes here. Uh, we'll have someone else cast a yes vote, and then we'll create a note in a different color. Feel free to, to post. You can post pictures on here as well. So, again, a very easy way to collaborate. Uh, and you'll see that these, these notes, if they're, if they're created in different colors, they automatically group in different parts of the screen. So we can use this for brainstorming sessions. We can, uh, we can drag these uh, around and do this. So if we're doing, like, a SWAT session, uh, we can load a, a different background here. Um, but and to click this background, I'll just click on this little background icon here. So now we've got strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So very easy to be able to to add a, to combine a few tools. We're not having to dig through a whole bunch of settings to make this happen. And then if I want to go, if I want to go and share uh, content on my on my laptop, now it's very easy for me to. Uh, Oh, so we can see someone's getting ready to share a uh, a uh, photo here. Oh, and got their their view of the uh, of the uh, of the go to meeting. Very nice. Uh, so, but if I wanted to show something from my display, I can come here and now I can open up my PowerPoint or wh whatever it is that I want to be able to share with the class. And you're still able to actually create on your own uh, uh, whiteboard space. So I can minimize I can minimize this. Uh, or I can have them both up at the same time. So uh, I'll go ahead and open up that white whiteboard space again. Oh, sorry, we get the screen mirror back up here. There we go. So uh, any questions so far yet on, on what we've gone through? Again, hopefully everyone's kind of picking up on this. The idea is that, um, again, very, very much on the surface, very easy, not a bunch of settings to dig through to make this happen. Uh, we know that there's going to be a very quick ramp up time, uh, you know, for 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 teachers and students alike to, to be able to get online. And so we want to make that 
that ramp up time as quick as possible by making things simple. So uh, that's what we feel like we have here. Now, if your class is kind of getting out of control and they're uh, they're starting to uh, you know get a bit distracted from the lesson, which may which may happen, especially. I got a question for you. Sure. Um, so where do you feel, based on your expert, you know, use of this tool, where does the go to meeting or the collaboration tool and the the BenQ tools, where do you feel like they 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 marry up? Because I know you know go to meeting has whiteboarding and I mean it's not as uh, good as that, but just where do you feel like they the two tools come together? I think you're kind of seeing you're, you're kind of seeing it here where you have one one space to be able to have your camera and then to be able to share your content from whether it's from a Mac, whether it's from Windows, whether it's from a, a Chromebook from the teacher device. So very yeah. easy to do that. And then to open a separate tab uh, and to be able to have a, a separate uh, whiteboarding space as well. So it also allows your students to be able to do the same thing, uh, to be able to, to, to use those two pieces uh, differently, just to be able to tab between those two. So you've got a wider space to be able to draw on, uh, be able to kind of absorb the information uh, very quickly. Uh, and, the, and again, this whiteboarding space works with, so if you have teachers who are, um, who prefer GoToMeeting or they prefer WebEx or they prefer Google Meets, the whiteboarding space, uh, uh, from at least from the student's view, is, is, is all the same. So uh, you're able to at least standardize that. So one of the biggest pieces or one of the biggest uh, requests we've seen from schools uh, is, to, is to try to offer, I think the, the term that, that, that's starting to come out is a hybrid classroom. And so whether people are uh, are uh, taking in content from uh, distance learning, like, we, like we're doing right now in this example, or if people are live, they want a very consistent experience. And so that's where we feel BenQ kind of has this uh, to offer. So if you're standing in front of the board, you're seeing the same whiteboarding space that you're out here. So you're not uh, you're not trying to do a go-to meeting, uh, you know, whiteboarding space here on the board while you're switching content. So this is where we kind of feel this really uh, enhances what what's going on, uh, you know, with the with the distance learning. So, and does that whiteboard overlay other app applications like a Google Doc or anywhere you can do inking or uh, those kind of things in the application itself? So what we can do is. Uh, so if we are, so in this example, I've, I, this is my, the actual Android application. Uh, we can use a two finger touch, like a peace sign, and we can open up a floating tool. And so whether I'm actually using the Android system, and here I'll click in the middle to dismiss this tool, and it'll dismiss my notes. But let's just say we have a website that's open here on the, uh, on the page here, and we want to, we want to circle something or bring attention to something here. So again, two fingers like a peace sign. We have our different colors we can select from. Uh, if this is in the way, I can just click and move this this tool out of the way. And if we're sharing content via Windows, uh, we can do that too. Uh, or if you're if you're connected with the Windows laptop with InstaShare, we showed you that we're able to pass touch wirelessly. We can also use the built-in inking tools in, in that way too. So a few different options on, on how to get those done. So, and that's all gonna be, that's all gonna depend on teacher preference too. So for, for this, for our easy write floating tool, it's just for taking notes and it doesn't actually document in the, uh, um, uh, in the actual notes. So if you want to uh, ink in a document, if you want to ink in a Word document, a PDF, a PowerPoint, you use the Microsoft inking tools to get that done. So if I have a whiteboard in two locations and I want to have a collaborative whiteboarding session between two different rooms. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you asked that. So let me show you how that happens. So uh, you're seeing how we're able to collaborate from from the web to the, the board. So if we're in a uh, let's just say we have two different uh, we want to add a, a second classroom to that as well. So we'll open up easy right. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stop activities, and this will stop this our, our whiteboarding session for now. Uh, so what I'm gonna show you, instead of clicking invite here, from the board I can click on join. And so it'll, I'll, I can type in the name of my classroom, or if I'm a teacher, I'll say, you know, Mr. Martin. And then the room ID will be that same ID that was uh, given when we hit the invite code. So. 
uh, whether, and we can also initiate this uh, whiteboarding session from the web. And so the, the, we can join board to board, board to web, web to board, and, and, and web to web. So a few different ways to initiate the whiteboarding session, So, but multiple ways to be able to connect. And so even if we had two whiteboards side by side, we could, we could use them in that way as well and create a collaborative space that way. Uh, I have a question. Sure. I noticed that when you started annotating over that website, it wasn't a screenshot, but it was a live website. You were, and I thought that was kind of unique in all the other whiteboards I've ever seen. They have to actually do a screenshot and then they can write on it. Is that true? Is that what we were doing different? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so what we can do, yeah. So it, it is, it is a live site. So we're scrolling up and down here. And then again, two fingers, like a peace sign. And then we can, we can document over the top of that if we wanted to. And then from here, we still have our notes. If we wanted to take a snapshot of this and then, and so we, we can do a snapshot, but this is actually over the live site. But let's just say we're already doing a whiteboarding session. We want to discuss this further. We can clip, click this uh, camera tool, take our camera, our hands like a, like a camera and actually snap this. You know, like we're snapping a picture. We can fine tune it here, but we'll just say that this is the, the we want to take out to easy ride. So we'll click easy and it'll take this small portion and now we can discuss it and say, you know, uh, sorry, click on my pen here. You know, what are we talking about? And then if, we, if we're done talking about this, we can move this to the side. So a few different ways to kind of combine these and make this, you know, really work for you. So, uh, but that's a great question. Let me show you how the, the how this works with the, uh, uh, inking tool. So let me see if I can get this done. Um, if we, we're going to try to do this, we're going to do both screen mirroring and screen casting. So uh, what I'm going to do is we'll minimize this and I will uh, start casting. And so what this is going to do is this is going to put my computer view up here. And so let's just, we'll, we'll open up the Edge browser. And so now we're taking a look at a, at a live website here. So if I click up here in the top right-hand corner, and I, again, I can do this from the IFP, or I can do this from my laptop with my mouse, or if I have a style, if my lap, laptop happens to be touchscreen, I can control it in that way too. So a few different ways, but I'm gonna click here. And so now I'm actually, I'm using Microsoft's built-in inking tools to be able to ink over the top of this document. So we can also do this in PowerPoint. And then with the, the difference when you're using these Microsoft inking tools is that now if I want to, if I need to be able to scroll, now my notes are actually scrolling with the page in the live view. So this, so if that's what you're trying to do and, and trying to accomplish, this is this is the way to get it done. And so, uh, so again, boards working around, some people prefer the floating notes and then I click it and it goes away because I'm just drawing attention to it. Some people are saying, hey, I want these notes to be persistent. I want them to scroll with what I'm working on. Let's say we're working on a multi-page uh, PDF that has, uh, this is my worksheet, you know, if, I, if I'm a math teacher and I've got a three-page PDF, I don't want to have to keep erasing notes and going back if I'm scrolling. I want my notes to be able to scroll. And so we can do that by opening up that PDF in, uh, we can do it by opening up in PowerPoint or we have a different viewer here that's built into the board that works in the same way that allows your notes to scroll with the PDF. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of, of uh, insights. So yes, we don't have to take a snapshot and then annotate over the top of it. So several different ways to get the annotating done depending on uh, on teacher preferences. So we'll get back to the, so I'll close this out. And we can choose to save our, if, if this is a web page we wanted to save our notes, we can choose to save those. I'm not going to, so I'll just click no. And we're gonna go does, back. Does the screencasting or yeah, screencasting, um, the wireless screencasting or mirroring, does that, is that specific to certain kinds of devices or can really any device, an iPad, a Chromebook, yeah. Mac? I, yeah, all, all of the above, Linux devices, so so all of the major OSs we cover and everything from cell phones to, uh, to so the one caveat with the uh, InstaShare piece for the casting okay. and mirroring, this piece requires the devices to be connected to, on the same uh, network. 
So in a, in a distance learning, you would require a VPN. Uh, in on-site learning, it would require the device to be connected to the same network that the board is connected to. So, but, the, but for the cloud, the, the, the whiteboarding piece, that's all cloud-based and hosted with uh, AWS. No, thank you, Chris. I'm just curious um, if I'm, you know, I'm a student here and I am kind of actually on a different network. Is there a reason I would need to cast? Can I just share my screen via go to yeah. meeting and you, you can you can share your screen and where um, where the where the Insta Share really kind of uh, shines is that uh, if you're if you are on the same uh, uh, network, if I'm a teacher, so obviously I'm able to touch my own device. But if people are uh, are casting, if students are casting their device here, and we can we can have up to four devices here on this uh, uh, here on this display with the RM and the new RP, we can actually show up to nine. Um, we can show up to nine student devices. The teacher can actually have touch back, and she can actually touch those laptops and be able to do feedback. So if she goes, "Hey, let's take a look at Jimmy's notes. You know, uh, he's really I think he's really got this problem solved. Let's see how he did it." We can click on that, and she can kind of help help along with the notes too, and highlight there. So, so I think that's where you you kind of see it's it's a, it's an enhancement. It's not a so people can still if they want to share their their screen using GoToMeeting from home, they can still do that and share that here. And they they can also use their uh, they can upload images using EasyWrite in the the cloud whiteboarding space to be able to share that way. So, okay, uh, if you can get that done. The options. But I, I, I like that. I'm not familiar with the ability to do that um, remote. Uh, that a teacher can actually control a student's desktop on that screen from. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, is so again. Uh, I know I'm kind of showing you a couple different ways to do the, to to do the same thing. The reason why we're doing that here in this demo is just so you're familiar with what with what's going on. Usually, if we're talking with a teacher or a teacher group. They usually have, uh, especially we're talking to like a set of like seventh to eighth grade math teachers. They usually kind of have a set way that they kind of, or, or a general workflow uh, as a school district that, that they like to work. And we help talk them through, okay, this is how we feel we can we can best help. But uh, uh, so we don't want to make it seem like it's convoluted. It's really simple. And we're just showing you that the board really does work around the teacher preference uh, or the instructor preference and not the other way around. We're not, we're not forcing you to learn the BenQ way. You're still doing the same things that you've always been doing as a teacher. Now you're just using them with a with a very easy to use product that should be very natural with a very little uh, on ramp to be able to, to use. So is the your laptop? You've got you're logged in twice. Is your laptop the so, the so in, that's, that's being shared here, or is the board part of the uh, go to meeting? So the only, so I'm I'm connected twice. So the, the the board is not the board is not joined to this GoTo, but that is an option. We can load that APK file. We can load that GoTo meeting APK file. We can load Zoom directly on the board, and not have to connect our laptop. We can connect in that way too. Um, the only reason why I'm connected twice, and I'm connected from my laptop, and that's where I'm doing my screen sharing. I'm using my cell phone. I'm connected from my cell phone for the camera because. As we all know, kind of this during this unprecedented go to, you know, the work from home time, webcams have been absolutely scarce. And I have, including myself, I've not been able to get, get my hands on one. So this is my workaround, which is using my, I have a cam, my cell phone on a tripod uh, holder on a ring light. And that's what I'm using as my camera. So well, you're not going to find a better camera than the one on your phone. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So. so and, I, and I'm and I'm using I'm an Android user, so I've, I've got even though it's an old Pixel 2 XL, the camera is still excellent. Um, I actually use it in video production to shoot 4K videos, including our uh, our product demos uh, currently. So we've been shooting quite a bit of those here with this, uh, you know, taking full advantage of this work from home time to create content. And so, the, but the, I will say the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to cast and mirror at the same time. Because then you kind of get this repeating, kind of like standing in front of two mirrors, kind of get sucked into the vortex. We've seen it happen on a couple of webinars too, uh, where people are, are 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 trying to to share and mirror at the same time. So, uh, but we just want to try to avoid that. So I'll I'll click st uh, stop casting, and then I'll use screen mirror so we can take a look uh, back at what we're seeing on the uh, on the native uh, piece. Um, so I, I was referring to Android when we're talking to the board. That's an important differentiator for us too. So we we, we have 80 hardware and software engineers in Taipei. Uh, I talk with them twice a week. 
I travel there twice a year. Well, I guess this, it'll be once this year, uh, hopefully. So, uh, uh, but what we do is, uh, um, it's a very open source. And so everything is, we put a ton of engineering into the Android piece. So all, everything that's running on the board is running on the native Android. It doesn't require a separate $700 OPS to be slotted in like most of the other board manufacturers. Most, most of all their advanced features are loaded on that PC. And so this is a board price, the, the safety features, the 7H hard disk display. Um, it, it's also going to put you at least $700 ahead. And that's if you just get one of the base model OPS, like, you know, I3 or a very basic I5 uh, uh, slot in PC. And then it, it's another device that you have to manage as well. So this is all built in Android. Amazon uh, uh, web service hosted uh, tools, and we can dig into those here. And we've got some documents and videos we can send you on how that backend piece runs as well. Chris? Sure. Um, I guess this is probably a dumb question, but I mean, can you talk about is there any limitations on using these with Chrome books? Uh, so there is um, what is uh, uh, screen, screen mirroring. Uh, sometimes, depending on the device, doesn't show up as an option, and it's it's a Google security issue. Depending on the on the chipset, our engineers are working with Google to uh, um, to see what we can do to try to to to, to make that work. Uh, so, but it's 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 common among all manufacturers that, the, that they kind of have that that particular issue. So it's just with how uh, uh, Chrome and, and the Chrome OS handles that that security, being able to uh, mirror the device from here out to a out to a display. But uh, that that would be the only limitation with uh, um, with Chromebook, and that, and that's and that's just for right this second. Like I said, our, our engineers are actively working on on that with uh, with Google directly. But that would be that would be the only difference. But otherwise, touch passes. We can still so if we connect a uh, um, a Chromebook or a Chromebox, we can still pass touch wirelessly, and we can still pass touch. Uh, the old-fashioned way, too, so if it's a teacher who's here, they can plug in an HDMI cable and a USB touch cable and be able to do it that way as well. So uh, we talked a little bit about our tools. Uh, so over here, we'll, we'll talk about the, the touch. So we have, I set my pin somewhere. I'm going to try to give you a close-up view of these. It's two different size tip pins. There's nothing special about these pins. They're passive pins. Uh, but they are in, in two different sizes. And so this is one of, uh, one of the modes that, that kind of sets us apart. Math teachers absolutely love this because they, uh, uh, they can write in two different colors at the same time. And so they can plot their point and then take their larger pin and without having to click on anything, be able to write in two different colors. And then we also have this, uh, and if I can find my, oh, here we go. Uh, paint, and I'm going to grab my second paintbrush here. There with me. Take the, the journey across the living room here. And so now I have uh, paintbrushes, so we can do this in paintbrush mode. We'll open up another page here. Swap to paintbrush mode. Make sure that uh, we'll turn off my palm eraser, because if we have the, this palm eraser on, just like the other uh, boards, you know, if, if we draw a line, we can use our palm to erase, or we can use a standard dry erase uh, marker to be able to erase. But if we're in this paintbrush mode and we have a larger brush that we don't want to show up as an eraser, we want to show up as a paintbrush, we can come to the settings, turn off this palm eraser, and so now I can take my wide brush. This is supposed to be a flower, by the way. Please don't judge me on my artistic talent here. Uh, but so we can come here. If I want to draw a smaller detail, with a, I can just use a smaller tip brush. Uh, we can put our uh, happy little rays of, of sunshine coming off here. And hopefully you can see that this thing, uh, it really, if you're looking at the video view, you'll see this thing really writes like a piece of paper, that the ink is falling very closely with, the, uh, um, with, with my pen or my paintbrush. So that's been one of the biggest obstacles of trying to get people to adopt these interactive flat panels is the lagging experience. It, feel, it doesn't feel like you're writing on a whiteboard. It doesn't feel like you're, it, it's like you're writing on a, a tablet that just can't keep up with you. And so 
Um, so with this board here, we've actually doubled the IR density uh, and reduced the touch distance from two millimeters to one millimeter. And so basically that's the, uh, the very techy way of saying this thing writes very much like a piece of paper. It's very true to a pen to paper, marker to paper, or in this case, uh, you know, paint the canvas uh, kind of experience. So uh, very easy for people to move from a whiteboard or even in some cases we've seen, we've gone direct from blackboard to this interactive you know, without any kind of um, real objection to how the board performs. So really quickly, we'll go over the, uh, the backgrounds here. So we can look, we have a few different options. We have a checklist uh, that's there. Uh, but if teachers have their own worksheets they want to try to work from, they just hit this plus sign, and then when they're signed in, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, very easy for them to get to their uh, uh, to their notes. So we can save, and again, we can save as a PDF or as PNG files. Uh, the next update that's coming in September uh, for the RM and the new RP devices, we'll be able to save this in what we call an IWB format, an interactive whiteboard format. It's a, it's a uh, vendor-neutral file format that allows you to go back and actually re-edit these documents just as if it was still an active whiteboard session. So if I were to hit confirm, it would open up my Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. But let's just say we have uh, visitors, for example, or we have a student teacher or somebody who wants to be able to, who's not a part of our Google environment, they're not a part of our Microsoft OneDrive environment, they want to be able to save this. I can click this little icon here, click the QR code, it, we'll say we, we can choose the pages we want. We'll share all of these. And so what's happening is this is uploading to a private AWS web space. So you can actually take your camera out now, scan this QR code, and be able to save these notes without having to go back and furiously jot down. So if you want to try to open up your camera, scan the QR code and click on the link, you'll actually be taken to a multi-page PDF that has all of the notes that we've taken so far. So we'll give everybody just a, a second or two to try that out. And th that link is good for how long? Like 30 minutes? It's 90 minutes. 90 minutes? Okay. This, this, this link goes away after 90 minutes. And so if we're wanting, if it's something that we're wanting to save, so and then, but people can, you can still save this directly on your device and save it for as long as you want. But as far as this upload, it only lasts for 90 minutes for um, privacy reasons. But if it's something they want to keep for longer than that, we click here and we save it to our Google Drive, our Dropbox, or OneDrive, whichever whichever device we're connected. Now, if, we're, if we've got some old-fashioned uh, um, uh, teachers out there, which is fine, uh, if you plug in a USB drive, we've got these three USB slots in the front, uh, the USB drive will show up on the bottom here. But that's kind of the point, though. That's what, that's what we're trying to do is make things easy. They'll go, oh, I left my, uh, you know, I, did I save that on what board am I at? Or you know, make sure that the, that the settings and the files and the experience follow the teacher no matter what room they're in or whether they're on campus or not. These files can still continue to follow them around. Chris, what size uh, displays does these models come in? Uh, so the, the displays that I have behind me, 65, 75, and 86 inch in this uh, RP uh, series. In the RM series, they are 55, 65, and 75 inch. So basically, we, our, our, uh, our panels go from 55 inches on up to uh, 86 inches. And if that's still not large enough, uh, we have a very unique feature. We have an HDMI out that's actually built into the side of the uh, monitor here on the opposite side. So you can actually, for the same price of a 75-inch IFP, you could, you could sell a school a 65-inch uh, 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 IFP and a projector. And so you have, the, especially in an auditorium environment, where they have a big display. So now you have the size of the uh, projector combined with the interactivity and the reliability of the touch of an interactive flat panel, and you've got a, you've got a comprehensive solution for your, uh, uh, your larger spaces, your larger teaching spaces. Does that HDMI out, is there anything besides the HDMI out that would maybe make it uh, better to use a BenQ projector or just any display, any big display? Just I mean, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go into uh, very briefly why, why BenQ projectors are, are better, but as far as, you know, the actual display, uh, you know, they can plug into any, any device, whether it's a, uh, you know, so it's not, it's not BenQ specific, you know, um, they, they can take that into another TV, they can take it into another existing projector, whether it's one of ours, whether it's a competing projector, but any any display that takes HDMI 
they can plug that into. So, uh, but that is that is a, that is a great question. Uh, so we also have uh, some some interactive. Uh, BigQ has some interactive projectors, and we'll probably dig into that in another uh, uh, another session. But also has this um, our our custom AMS system. So all of this with our uh, file management, the settings, that's all managed with with a system that we call account management system, and that that's hosted on AWS as well. And so that allows teachers to save their settings. It allows them to have their their cloud storage follow them around. Uh, so again, very easy for them to use. Is there any integration with Microsoft Teams? Uh, so we can. What we can do is we can actually. Uh, so we have so OneDrive, which is the Microsoft product. With Teams, we can actually we, we can load the APK directly here on the board and use that for video conferencing as well. So we can do it in this way, or we can we can use Microsoft Teams with my laptop here and be able to share the content in the way that we're we're doing similarly with InstaShare. So two different ways. Sorry, is there a standalone way to use this with Teams? By is like, is there a USB input on it for a camera, or do you should you use a laptop or some other code? Oh, yeah. So absolutely. And so there, there is. Um, so that that is a good question about the camera. We can absolutely use the board as a standalone uh, device for Teams, for GoToMeeting, for WebEx. Uh, the, these these boards by default don't have a camera built into them. Uh, there are several schools and organizations who say I absolutely will not purchase one of these devices if it has a camera built into it. I don't want. You, I, don't, I don't care if you have a camera. You know. So, so what we did is we have the option. So, uh, and as as you very well know, you can be as economical or as spendy as you want with these uh, webcams. Uh, but the the, the uh, specification that you're looking for is that it works with Android. Most most cameras don't won't have it listed as specific as this is Android. They usually say something like OTG, which is uh, uh, short for on the go, and it's kind of when people used to connect uh, those devices to their cell phones. And so, that just look for a, a camera that's at Android compatible or OTG compatible. So, most Logitech cameras will be, uh, you know, I, I tested it, um, uh, 28 webcams uh, when I was still in the office. I think there was two of them that didn't that didn't work. So, most webcams will work and be able to be used with uh, with with Zoom or Teams or any of these uh, applications here. So I'll show you where I have this loaded. Let's see here. Do I have this loaded on here? And I don't. I don't have my account validated, but we do have. But this is directly from the board, and so this is the from the Android from the Android side. I actually have Microsoft Teams loaded here, so I can actually. What option do you have for logging into the board? Is there any ways we can make it easier, like with prox cards or? Any kind of methodology to make it easier for somebody to log in? Yeah. So yes, yeah, so we yeah we definitely we, we went over that at the kind of the uh, uh, the beginning. So there's the, so we have the NFC card they can scan, uh, or they can uh, they can scan they can open up their their phone. Everyone's got their phone, uh, and they can scan a QR code here, and they can type they type in their username and password once the first time they do it, save their credentials, and now all they do is scan the QR code and they're logged into the board. So Chris, a lot of places, you know, a lot of schools now have HID cards that they use for door proximity access and things like that. Can this QR code information be put on that hid card so that they're not having to have two cards? So what we what we can do is so uh, the HID cards are are RFID technology and these cards are NFC, including the reader. So what we what we can't do is. Uh, is is you use the same card it, just as is, but we can get very close to a single card experience. And from the user standpoint, it really is a single card. They, I don't have any with me. I actually just shipped my last out. Um, but on Amazon, they're available for um, fourteen ninety nine, and you get fifty of them. So it's it's on par for twenty six cents a sticker. But you can put an NFC sticker on the back of that HID badge. They don't interfere with each other, and you can scan that HID badge, and now. You have one badge that is doing both logging into your board and getting you through the school and whatever else that you're using that HID for. So, um, so not exactly, but we can provide that single card experience for the user. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank it's, you. It's actually two tags that you're having on one card, but but from the user's perspective, they've got a single card they're right. using for. Right. And so, uh, and we'll get you the NFC um, tag format that we use. But they can use. I mean, you can get creative with it. So we can do the stickers on the back of these. 
they have bracelets, they have, you know, uh, like keychains that, you know, the same that you would use, kind of like, they, I guess you would call them your key fob, but you would kind of scan at your apartment complex to get into your garage or, you know, to a uh, common area. So that we, we have those available as well. So completely customizable on how, you, how you're logging into the boards here. Um, one key differentiator is our RM model does not have this NFC card reader. It still has everything else, and you can still scan the, the QR code to be able to log in. And that RM model does not have our uh, antibacterial, antimicrobial. And Bill can get you the cost differences on our, on our models as well. So um, it used to be that the, the RM was kind of a lesser model, didn't have all of these built-in features. Now that they're kind of uh, starting to approach, and it's just those, those small differences that kind of make the difference between our RP and our RM line. But for some people, those are huge differences. Some people want to absolutely log in with this. And then antibacterial, antimicrobial these days is huge. So, you know, for, for people that's, you know, that, that's worth the, uh, uh, the very small upgrade cost. And so I promised Bill I'd never talk uh, cost. I'm just the nerd who explains how the products work. But, uh, um, but Bill will be happy to get you pricing and the price difference between those models. So let me log back in here. So again, you see how easy it is to log in and log out. If I were logged in as teacher one, and uh, uh, I'm not seeing my second card here, but teacher two can come and scan their card, and they don't have to worry about teacher one, you know, coming and saying, hey, you're still signing to the board. Can you sign me out? Uh, and then a thing, too, is if, if, if I'm teacher one and I'm going to uh, room number two to go teach my second class, uh, if I scan my card in room two, I'm automatically logged out of board one, so I'm not having to worry about leaving my board open. And you can set timeout schedules on these two, so they could say after five minutes of inactivity, or if there, if it's something where there's not other people who are really going to be in the building, we can set it to an hour of inactivity. So uh, again, very customizable from that from that standpoint. Um, so, but that we we spent kind of a majority of our time here on this. Cloud boarding, distance whiteboarding, there's a lot more features that I'm going to just kind of scan over very, very briefly. Uh, for remote support, which is very important, you know, it's very important that the teachers receive support as well for these boards. We have, we've partnered with TeamViewer, and so what will happen is we'll, we'll connect, we'll get an ID here, and so if you, if you need help, so your IT department can get this code, and I'll, I'll circle it here with using my... Uh, you give them this code, and they can connect from their Android. They can connect from their laptop. It doesn't matter whether they're on campus or not. They, it's completely through the cloud and be able to connect. It'll, uh, it'll ask the teacher if they want to allow that person to connect. They can do that. And so whether it's remote support or if it's someone like me who's helping out in the IT department with uh, troubleshooting a board, I can log in remotely. I do this all day and help out people with answering questions and showing how to do things. So we can do this, and we can also install a team viewer host, which is unintended access, which doesn't require somebody to be in front of the board in order to access it and, and do some do some features. Uh, we have a device Does management that, system. Sure, go ahead. Does that remote support, is that just strictly a connection between um, BenQ and the customer, or is it something like if they wanted to use our help desk, um, or our engineers, or whatever, it could be a remote support connection to, to Harvard. Yeah, it's a, it's a remote support connection. So for any, it's it's not just a, uh, um, it's not a tool just for BenQ support. I mean, it's it's actually specifically for you know, handing off to an IT department to allow them to be able to support their own products, and then we just make ourselves available if we if we need to for advanced troubleshooting. So okay. even if you, you could you could give this to, uh, uh, I forgot the title they use for. Uh, for te instructional teachers or instructional design teachers who are kind of like the teach the teachers, kind of the, they're not quite IT admins, but they're, they're the ones who are mainly helping out the boards. We could give them team viewer access as well. It's to, to be able to help them help, be able to help their peers out before they've got to make a call to IT support. So really easy to, to not have to, uh, um, you know, deploy somebody out. Sometimes there's not an IT person even on campus, but even if they are, they got to walk across campus to, with this two to three minutes, they're, the problem's on and the teacher's able to move on with their lesson. So that's going to be very important. How easy it is to use, how easy it is to troubleshoot, it's going to be very important to keep these boards up and online, especially in this distance learning kind of environment. Uh, we have, it, so with that display management system, we can deploy apps to the boards. We can push those apps out to a single board. 
a group of boards or every board in the district. So if we want to deploy Chrome out, we can do that. Uh, we can also schedule on and off of the boards. So if we want to say, hey, there's nobody here on campus past 5 o'clock, turn off all the boards at 5 o'clock, except for uh, uh, Miss Mary Jo Sue, who's down here in room uh, uh, 323. She stays until 7 o'clock every day because she has a night class. We can, make, we can, we can do exceptions for that. Um, or we can say, well, make sure all these boards are powered on as soon as everybody walks in the building so they don't have to worry about booting it up, just turn all these things on at 7.45 so when the teacher shows up at 7.50, they're ready to jump into their lesson. So, Chris, uh, did sure, you say the, the 86 was available on the RP series or the RM? Uh, the RP series. It's not available in the, uh, in the uh, RM series. The RP is the higher level. Correct. But like as, as I mentioned previously, that gap was was pretty wide between our RM and RP product. Uh, with with the release of this, new, uh, the, the RM is actually a newer product, um, but it but the, but the RP is is the premium product because it has the antibacterial screen. It's got the NFC readers, so uh, we'd be able to offer that too to be able to for people who are looking for that much more value if they're trying to squeeze that many more dollars or or try to get that many more displays in their budget. We offer we offer the RM as well. So, thank you. Sure, but now, but that gap it used to be, like I said, it used to be a wide gap. Now that gap is pretty close. So, uh, even if you're choosing the RM, you're not you're not giving giving up uh, uh, quite a bit. So, or not as not as much as you used to previously. Well, the big thing would be the size that we're probably going to be looking at the bigger ones in a lot of classrooms. Plus that NFC uh, reader that's that points you right to the to the bigger one, the better one. And we've seen we've seen some uh, uh, um, screen manufacturers who are finally trying to include the NFC reader uh, technology to try to catch up. Uh, keep an eye on keep an eye on those if, if that's important to you. Uh, most of uh, the only other board that I've seen that that has NFC built in uh, only allows you to use three uh, three different cards, and it's only locally on the board. It doesn't let you go from class to class to class. It only allows you to sign three cards to a single board. And you got to do that on a one-to-one -one basis. And it, it, who wants to do that, right? It's not so. Again, very powerful tools, but very simple to manage uh, via the web. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have time to uh, uh, demo the uh, uh, the the broadcast feature, but this is very important. And the, again, everything included in the cost of the board. So this is our um, our device paging system. So we can actually send static text, scrolling text, or even YouTube videos. So if we want to page a student, we can say Sally Johnson to the office. Uh, if we want to uh, show what's for lunch, if people are here, we can scroll a message. Or if it if there is a uh, an announcement, if, it, if you're doing student announcements while people are on board, we can push those out to the boards. Or if we if we we can also use it in an emergency. We can say if there is a weather event or an active shooter, we can actually push messages out to the every board on campus and say, you know, uh, find shelter, find a safe space, or whatever it is, messages we want to be able to push out. So, <coughs> pardon me, just get a little Chris, does it read cap? Does it, does it read cap? I'm sorry? Does it read common alert protocol? Or is it just? Uh, so let me find out. Point. I think we're working on it. So I know there's some RSS feed capability, and uh, so, but let me let me let me find that out from our uh, our engineers. I know they were look. Uh, that's that's a question that we received more than once. Let me find out where we're at on that right now, and so um, uh, and I'll make sure that uh, either Bill or myself follows back up with uh, with everybody to see if we if we're supporting that currently. So, but that's a great question. Um, but this is all. This is all hosted from a. Uh, um, you, you push all those messages out from the web as well. So very, very easy to uh, uh, to be able to do that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can uh, cover. I think uh, uh, I, I have plenty of time here. I don't know what your schedule is looking like. I think we're we're scheduled to uh, five o'clock. We're a little past that now, but I'm happy to keep going if. Uh, if uh, if everyone still has the availability, so just let me know how we're looking on time, and and I can kind of either keep explaining or or, or kind of try to wrap things up for you guys. So you just, you just let me know. I have another commitment in about ten minutes. Okay. So um, what I'd like to, Chris, this is and Bill, this is great. This is great. Um, oh, thank you. It'll 
uh, the recording will be very helpful, uh, but I think we need to set something up that's a little longer and uh, with a bigger group of our our sales and engineering people. Sure, absolutely. And we're, we're very happy to do that and, and do multi, if we gotta do the same session over and, or expanded sessions or break this down, very happy to do that. So okay. um, that is exactly what I do all day. I'm hap happy to do it. And so- well, uh, you're good at it, Chris. <laughs> thank you. So it's, it's one of the great things about this, you know, I know I've got the purple shirt, you know, on me and I've got the screen behind me, but it's one of the great things about this product. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. This is my first job in manufacturing. I've been at BenQ for uh, almost two years now, but I come from 25 years of IT and AV integration experience. So I come from it from the installer side. I come from it from the, uh, uh, from the, from the networking side, from the, uh, 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 from the IT manager side. So I understand that piece of it. And so um, it's a very easy product to use. The fact that it's open and e easy to use. I don't have to do a whole bunch of explaining or selling or, or stretching the truth. All I do is stand in front of the product and explain what it does and, uh, you know, just help people make informed decisions. So that's, uh, you know, the board. Okay. The product's making awesome. it easy. And that's important that you understand the, where the rubber meets the road issues Absolutely. that can happen. Absolutely. So when it comes to troubleshooting or integration questions or, hey, I've got an Aver document camera that I'm trying to include, or, you know, how would you set this room set up? So I'm, I'm more than happy to make myself available as a resource for those questions as well. Uh, when it comes to troubleshooting, if, if there's a device that's flapping, you've got an Extron switcher that's giving you some trouble uh, and, it, and it's, you know, uh, we make sure to, to at least get you, if, if we don't have an answer, Get you pointed in the right direction versus going, oh, Perfect. check your network, or oh it's, oh, it's probably your switch, you know, it's yeah. not us. So we, we like to make sure that we're, we're offering comprehensive support. That includes, hey, you know, maybe you want to take a look at these network ports. We want to take a look at, uh, you know, oh, let's double check the, the, the cabling between these two or three devices and then help you, help you troubleshoot and, uh, and really be a partner and not just somebody who's just selling you our display products, but really help, help you be a partner in, in, uh, in, in offering solutions. So we do, we do that all the time. So, okay. so uh, one final question. I, I, en I envision uh, and predict that we will get a unit in uh, to be used as a demo, uh, but does Bill or does anyone, uh, if you're in the area, like if we wanted to bring customers in to get a really pro demo before we really learn it well, is that a, a possibility? That's, that's very much a possibility. It's, it's um, you know, right now what, what I, I, do, I do webinars for, for, for customers all day and, and resellers bring us in for, for different opportunities. So I'm available in this, even during this time, whether it's this time or we're post, you know, if we're, if we're back in the office, I'm able to do this via webinar. Uh, if the, if the opportunity, uh, uh, makes sense, if it makes sense for me to fly out somewhere and, and be on site and be able to walk through this, I'm happy to do that too. And that's both from the, uh, uh, the pre-sales uh, decision onto the uh, to the onboarding piece. So, and I'll make sure that everybody has my cell phone number, and so you'll have direct you'll have direct access to me, and we'll we'll be able to uh, um, make my resources available to you for even for your uh, you know making this presentation on your behalf to to a customer for any opportunities. Well, so. we'll make sure to book you for a bunch of on-site demos around January February here in Wisconsin. All right, <laughs> <laughs> he's been there. He's been out there in that time. I've been, I've, been, I've been sloshing through the snow with Bill. I've been everywhere from there, from, you know, around, around the heartland to, you know, Oshkosh, Wisconsin to, you know, you, you, you name it. So, uh, but I was also, one of my last trips, uh, uh, January this year was, was actually to, uh, uh, South Beach, Miami for the, uh, FETC show that was down there. Oh, so. fall on your sword. <laughs> But absolutely love travel. I'm I'm normally tra uh, when it, when we're in a uh, without travel restriction, usually traveling once or twice a week. So, uh, but happy happy to do it. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, Chris. Really appreciate it. Yep. So yeah. So there's, there's still quite a bit more that we want to dig in with the product, uh, but we'll ha we'll we'll set other times to do that. We'll talk about the projectors. I'll, I will give you a quick twenty second um, uh, pitch on the on the projectors. We are the largest manufacturer of DLP. Uh, Texas Instruments DLP projectors in the world. Uh, in our, our projectors, we have uh, our uh, 20,000 hours, completely fully sealed laser engine, which means uh, completely dustproof, certified dustproof, IP5X certified. 
Um, and the short of it is we get high color accuracy in 20 completely 20,000 hours of completely maintenance free operation. So no bulbs to change and more importantly, no filters to replace. I mean, you'll have to remodel your classroom before you got to touch your projector is, is generally the short way we, we describe the projectors and we be able to have a uh, high contrast, very high readability of text and uh, uh, very accurate colors for the duration of that, uh, um, of the, of the lifetime of that projector. So, and we'll talk about Insta Show and all that stuff another time, but, uh, but very excited to be able to work with you guys. We do, uh, uh, you know, unlike some other resellers, we do partner with our resellers versus just signing up anybody that we can. So we really want to be a, a partner and a resource and, and it really contribute to your growth and, uh, you know, hopefully get some uh, BenQ products and start making everybody's life and, uh, uh, easier all the way around. That sounds good. Yeah. And, uh, and Bill, can you forward the re uh, recording to me, please? Sure, sure. And the next uh, webinar we're going to do is going to be June 5th uh, from 1 to 2.30 Central Time. So we'll have, uh, you know, maybe a, a dealer in Tennessee, a dealer in Georgia, invite you guys and have non-competing dealers on there. So I'll get that information to you guys as well. Oh, that's a great idea. Yep. Okay. Appreciate your time and everything. Uh, so, All right. so you like the way this one as far as the demo tomorrow? tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Staying, especially staying focused on how they can do the the virtual classroom and the interaction from kids that aren't even there in the in the classroom physically. That's huge. Yeah, and so and it's it's one of the things that we're trying to refine too. Is and we're trying to get a little bit more in touch with you know. What are majority of schools using? But usually they're looking to us for that for that solution. Uh, but right. I think one of the important things that, that a couple of schools point out, but some don't, but it's going to be important, is consistency of the experience, whether you're out virtually attending the class or if you're in the class. or Because there's going to be times where you have 50-50 or it's, you know, they say may say you can only have 25% capacity in your class. So you may have different students in one day a week while the other 80% stay home. And so having right. that consistency between the home and the in-class experience is going to be very important, and we feel that we have the tools available to, 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 to get those as close as possible in a very uh, easy way to do. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. Well, I have to run. i got to kick off another meeting, so yep. believe it or not. Well, thank you very much for your time. You guys have been a great audience, and I'm looking forward to doing this again and explaining more about BenQ products and uh, – uh, let's uh, let's help some schools and make some sales. Yep. Sounds good, Chris. Yep. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All right. Yep. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.